Hi guys, welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. This is a deep dive into GameStop. This will be a one-take session, guys. Ride with me. A little bit different. I usually do these about once a quarter. I know what's coming up for the earnings. I'm going to tell you my ideas, what I think the company will do, and how it's going to you know, navigate forward. But I'm going to give you a little bit more background as far as why you should be buying the stock versus uh, staying on the bench. But we'll go from there. So good luck, guys. Join me and enjoy. So GameStop Deep Dive, it's here by me, myself, Morantz Rants, sure. And it's a two-year logarithmic wedge is what you see here. So this is the chart for GameStop. Looks amazing. Uh, we're still within that Phineas and Ferb face. You guys see it. If we can break out on the upside of this, it'd be awesome. If we don't, well, then we'll break off on the downside. But I don't think that's going to happen either. We still have months to play out, and uh, it looks great. So I love the stock. What can I tell you? Buying GameStop. What do we do? Well, I'll tell you guys, there's a couple of things first. Before I even take my time and, you know, FOMO versus the research and catching the bottom and buying the top, everything I want to explain to you. Um, the one thing I would tell you is this. This year, my wife and I bought a house and we did so much research. Um, well, I would say this past year. We bought, we did so much research on buying the house and it was because we were putting our life savings in there. And we we're making sure it's the best decision for myself and my family. And I want to encourage you guys to start doing that with every investment you make. I know there's a lot of people out here, a lot of gamblers out here who had nothing to do during the pandemic, who started gambling on stocks. And now they're just, they, they want the rush of, hey, I hit this one. I got this one right this day. And it's just not me. I invest. And I look at GameStop and I took the time to break it down, really read every line of a balance sheet and say, you know what? I think they're headed in this direction. Um, yes, the leadership helps, but I, I took my time. So if you're going to buy a house and do that, do it that way, why not do it that way with your stock? That's just me. Take your time. FOMO versus the research. You know, people try to rush in when they see things running because they want to make a quick profit. Some do, some don't. But I've never rushed into something as it's running because I've always said, you know, if you were in it before, well, then kudos to you. I'm going to sit back and give you a golf clap and just watch it run and, and be happy for you. But I would, I would rather do that. And do the research for a stock because if you feel a stock is going to go up, I'll just give an example. A stock's going to go up 10 times, right? You're like, it's a 10 bagger, it's going to run. Uh, why not wait? Do your homework, make sure that it is that. And if it went up, you know, maybe two times, then you could still buy in at that point. You're not missing anything. So if you guys believe GameStop is going to run, you know, I'm buying it at every level because why wouldn't I buy it at 20 if I was willing to buy it at 40? And this whole year, we've been given a discount. Um, and, and I'm so thankful because I was able to accumulate more shares and, and give more knowledge out. And then other new people came in. And we're just going to keep that rinse and repeat. Catching the bottom versus catching the top. I don't know the difference here because I think it's all the bottom. My heart that I've been watching this stock and I've been paying attention to it, there's so much room for growth. There's so much runway left on this stock. Uh, I definitely tell you, uh, the bottom was $15 this year, <laughs> you know, $15 just a month and a half ago. And I, I tried to buy as much as I could. The top $48 and some change in the past year. Okay. Still try to buy as much as I could. I'm never going to shy away from it after the four to one split, but I, I just love what we're, what we're doing here. And there are no bag holders in my eyes because it's uh, it still has a lot, a lot left. Distribution. We this is a, a chart here from 2010. We went from 17 distribution centers and, and what we paid for all the way down to seven. We have uh, mainstreamed or streamlined the distribution of GameStop. We did not renew the lease in Kentucky, which I'm so happy with. Uh, it'll be closed by March. The employees, unfortunately, will lose their jobs. Yes, but it's business. And, and in business, a lot of those are entry level positions and they'll find another job. So um, but when I look at it, I'm just letting you know that by not signing a new lease with these uh, commercial real estate lease, you know, percentages, uh, it's good business to not sign a new lease. Um, it was a small fulfillment center, 260,000 square feet compared to the 500 and 700,000 square foot ones, you know, in Reno, Nevada and York, Pennsylvania. So we've made up more than enough uh, room for that. Uh, that's just called projecting. You know, we, we know what's coming our way and we signed great leases last year when the rates were very low. So it's a good time to stack your money and just watch it. And, and not spend it. So uh, I thought that was a good good move by GameStop, and I can't wait to hear the announcements um, 
in a couple of weeks from now. Next thing is what they call sandbag, what I call sandbagging. This is just me. There's no one told me this stuff. I just I just did some more research on the marketable securities, and you know it's it's valued at two thirty eight. If you guys saw the cash on hand and marketable securities, they actually went up from quarter to quarter. Uh, we had an increase from quarter two to quarter three, and we're we're still over a billion dollars, right? But those marketable securities that those are um those are different because. They give an evaluation based off of when you bought them. That's not based off of what they're worth. So they could be worth a lot more today, and you wouldn't know it until we sell them. So it's how you can hide some revenue on a balance sheet. And why do I think GameStop wants to hide revenue? I think they love that no one knows what the hell they are. I think they, you know, for us, the shareholders, the ones that deserve it, the ones that diamond hand, the ones that go through this ride. Um, we know what, what we have, but a lot of people out there outside looking in, they're just looking they're like, yeah, they're nothing. They're, they're just selling video games and they're trash. And I'm just looking at you like, like, do you even know who Ryan Cohen is? Do you even know what we're doing? And, and do you know how this is resetting? So um, those marketable securities, believe it or not, guys, is a great way to hide money if you wanted to from quarter to quarter. And I want to know how they how they pan out. I really do. Um, Next thing is advertising. We're not advertising. We don't. Our advertising budget in the past was almost eighty million dollars a year. But after reading Larry Chang's tweet, and he said, "Hey, we're not going to be doing any advertising, or or great companies don't need to really. It's all word of the mouth." And we have a different clientele. We have gamers, and gamers are born every day. Gamers are diligent. Gamers show up, and that's us. So I'm a definite gamer, and I know a lot of you guys are too. If you're not, well, then maybe you're just in the stock for a a squeeze or for a run, but. There's so much more to GameStop, and I, and I know a lot of us have been shopping at GameStop more more often than not. So um, I love it that the advertising budget is minimal, and because that means it's it's going off the business model of something like Costco, where they don't advertise at all, and, and they keep that money in-house. It hits the bottom line. It's perfect. It's what you need to right the ship. Too many sergeants, not enough soldiers. Um, as I look at this, guys, in, in the past, we've had this many board of directors, okay? It was 11 on the board, and it was just massive. And yeah, you get it. everybody has a vote. Everybody has a say. Well, we've shrunk that down to five. And in those five, I've seen three of them buy uh, shares this year. So they're buying shares. They're doing the right thing because they actually have incentive to do the right thing. You know, when your insiders own shares and they buy shares, it tells it tells you a lot about what you how they feel about their company and the direction of it. So uh, they didn't have to buy shares; they already get paid in in shares, and they already have money on hand. But I promise you guys, they they know what they have, and they and it's gems, man. It's gems, and uh, and if you want to follow the money or follow leadership, this is the time you do it, and this is how you do it. So uh, I hope you guys are paying attention to that. Uh, the next thing is going to be, we went from 7,500 stores in 2017 down to 4,500 stores. We've shrunk our, our footprint, which is great, for mobility, to be nimble. And when people look at top line revenue and they're like, oh, they're down in sales. They used to be $9 billion. Now they're only $6 billion. It's like, yeah, that's okay. That's okay because it's still the same ratio. The ratio is $1.4 million per store. It has not shrunk. It has not changed. You might get a quarter or two where you're like 1.3, 1.4, or a year or two where you're like 1.3. But if you're above 1.1, you can be profitable. You can figure it out. I've already looked at the numbers. And if they can come in at 1.4, I'm, I'm just I'm laughing inside at people that don't understand. You know, top line revenue is not everything. It's the, it's the, it's the rate of growth that you can produce, uh, the footprints there, the, the combination of it all. Uh, we have a layered growth mentality where the, sh the shopper that shops at year one is the same at year five because people just keep coming back with the same business model for gaming because gaming is not going to stop. I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but for guys who think it's, it's like out of the industry is going down, you're wrong. There's minimal competition out here. The competition was what? Target? <laughs> go, go check their balance sheet. I'll show it to you. Look at those fundamentals. When I say look at these fundamentals, guys, I'm looking at just that. Um, I look at the sales. I look at the cash on hand. And then I look at the inventory, right? So we are actually selling two times the amount of inventory that's on hand at times. Um, we will sell. When you have, uh, let's just say, if you had two times the inventory versus the sales you have, well, there is an issue on inventory. That's not the issue here. And by shortening up the inventory numbers, we actually shrink it by 10 million from quarter to quarter. Um, how about this quarter? Do we shrink it? Do we maximize it? I always equate it 
to a bakery. If a bakery was selling cheesecakes and they had a hundred cheesecakes and they sold them all, but they sold out at four o'clock in the afternoon, well, hell, they should have made more because you got to know how many you could sell in a whole day. So I think that these operators are finding that out. How much inventory do I have to have on hand so that I could sell it all out? And and we'll find that out in this in these next three weeks as far as how much they sold and how much they carried over on hand. But respectively, I love the number and I love fundamentals like this, guys. I, I understand it. Uh, I, I'll even tell you this. Most of you guys should be buying things you understand. If you guys don't understand, you know, the P&L of it all and that's profit and losses, uh, just hang around, hang around and maybe you'll learn and then we can all break it down together because there's things about the balance sheets that I don't understand sometimes, but even I have to go ask for help, which is great. And then somebody helps me and then I learned it a little bit more. So I want you guys to do the same. Um, I do have a number here. I know it's not here on this screen here, but as far as revenue goes for GameStop for the quarter, I'm looking at 2.2 billion. Uh, if it's going to hit 2.36 billion, that's a phenomenal number. We will beat out six billion dollars for the year if we can get there. But that's what I'm looking for. If we can hang on tight, um, but we're only down 50 million dollars, guys. We're only down 50 million dollars from year over year, 2021 to 2022. That's all we were down after three quarters. Uh, it says a lot about us um, as far as sales goes, and, and I love it. Now here's some bonus tips. P. You know, when you're looking at projected earnings and you wonder how much uh, how much a stock can actually be worth, you know, there's evaluations out there and they'll give you, you know, your PE 25 times, 50 times like Tesla. You know, everybody tells you, I, I feel like it's a handicap only because if you're trading one times your PE, you have all the room in the world to grow. And that's mostly like brick and mortar. When I look at Best Buy, it's the same way. But think about it. Best Buy lost how much money this year? Two and a half billion dollars in cash. Target lost $5 billion in cash. Kohl's lost $1.6 billion in cash. A lot of retail stores lost money. Bed Bath & Beyond, $1.4 billion in cash. GameStop didn't lose like that. GameStop might have burned off a little here to, to expand a call center or do these things to pick up the inventory numbers from $600 million to $900 million. That's what they've been doing, but they've had a net loss of like $90 million last quarter. That's nothing. Those are easy to explain that you can you can equate that to controllables, right? Things that you can control, supplies, equipment. Uh, you can also equate that to uh, the fact that as in, inflation is true. I can't even get away from that as I'm thinking out loud. So you look at inflation, you look at controllables, you look at paying off executives that left the company and we still had to pay them. You look at the FTX deal that happened and that was a failed deal. Like, yeah, we made some mistakes, but guess what? We pay for them and we keep rolling on. We just don't dwell on them. So that the PE handicap is real. For us, I think it's a plus because if we're if we're actually trading off low PEs, guess what can happen overnight? You can get called technology company tomorrow and, you, and I'll let you decide what we're worth. Next is insider ownership. Like I've told you, the biggest person to lose money here, his own money is going to be Ryan Cohen, RC Ventures. He has his own money on the line, so of course they're going to want to do what's right. Debt versus cash. We have minimal debt, $38 million in debt for uh, corporate cash debt. That's a French debt from the uh, COVID that's going to be pushed out for five years. Minimal percentage points on that, but cash on hand is, is monster for us, and that's what you do right now in, in these hard times. Uh, proven expansion. So we have the ability to show proof that, that e-commerce works 24-7. Our footprint is at 4,500 stores. Can we shrink that? But the expansion is just not be just not brick and mortar. The expansion is also catalog. We increased our catalog. We increased collectibles. We increase things that we sell, and, and it's great. So I, I love that we have proven expansion. The credit rate mentality is, is survival, right? So we don't have this issue. And I only bring this up because I've seen numerous companies right now that are getting raided because of what they owe and those bondholders are making these companies do things they would never do. And I look at Bed Bath & Beyond and I look at AMC and I and I look at um, the next one would be Kohl's and I've never seen companies have to go out there and survive because of what exactly? Pressure, shorts, the distressed credit investors, private equity? Yeah, we don't have those issues here. Buying GameStop shares is not is not a myth. It's not something that actually like drives you crazy at night. You can't sleep if you buy them. No, you sleep better. It's the complete opposite. So I, I love this. Now, we also have the ability, just so you keep messing around shorts, 
We have the ability to buy back $100 million worth of stock. Uh, we bought back $200 million in 2019 at around $5 a share. Right now, if they were to drop it and keep doing what they're doing, I mean, you're playing with fire. Ryan Cohen and the boys can drop the hammer at any time and buy back $100 million worth of stock. I can only imagine what would happen to the stock price, but that would be Armageddon, and I'm still waiting for it, and that's why I hold on to the stock. Now, here's my last part. Recheck the story. Remember why you guys bought in. If the story's changed, reevaluate your situation. A lot of you guys buy into other stocks, and the, the narrative has changed over time because of the moves by insiders. In this case, for me, I recheck the story, and I look at GameStop, and I look at Larry Chang, and I look at Ryan uh, Cohen, I look at Alan Addle, I look at the boys, and I say, okay, what's up, guys? A has the company lowered shareholder value at any point in time? I'd say no. Yes, they did an offering when the stock was at $230 to $215. They, they cashed out great to put the new initiatives on the table. They didn't do it to make themselves rich. They didn't do it to rob retail. Retail bought those shares willingly. I bought those shares willingly. I loved what they're doing at that time frame, even now. So they've, they've never really lowered shareholder value. The insiders own shares themselves and they buy them. That's awesome for me. It tells me everything I need to know about the type of company I want to be involved with. And the next thing is this. There is survival debt and then there's growth debt. And that survival debt is what companies are doing, those financial gymnastics to stay alive, and they're offering up their company. They're offering up all of the ideas that they could just to survive, but it's costing them everything. You know, um, when you diversify your, your business strategies, that means you're going to fail at the main core business that you're supposed to be doing, right? So in our case, our growth is, our, well, the debt that we do go into is based off of expanding the catalog, expanding what we do do. And if we are, that sounds weird, what we do do, I'm sorry. Um, but we are buying products that we want to sell online and want to deliver to the door. And final delivery matters for, for GameStop. And GameStop, they actually mainline and, you know, they streamline their, their logistics, their in-source logistics, in-house. That means they're not doing third party. They're literally taking everyone out of the equation but themselves and they're just putting it all on themselves and it's just a better business model it's it's who do you hold accountable for final delivery i ask you that and if you guys don't know what i mean by that it's like you get the product to you who do you complain to you want to complain to gamestop well great they got a call center with 500 people in florida they just built and they just hired call them they want to know what's going on it's a better business than it was yesteryear you know for all this these gruntled ex-employees that are looking at the new payment structure and no overtime. These guys don't understand the business of nurturing people and a culture. You have to start somewhere. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And this is the, this will be the end of the video. I know it's a little bit longer than normal and I apologize. You want to invest in a company, guys? Go invest in a stock. You can, and you guys can go make trades and get in and out of it and brag about your sheet and, you know, or even your porn loss. You guys can go do that and post it somewhere. I'm, I'm just not that guy. I'm, I'm an actual investor that takes my hard-earned money. You want to win in the stock market? You want to win in this world? Go back to work. Take your money. Go to work. And when you go to work and you come home and you get your check, take a portion of it and put it into a company that you respect a company that you believe in and leadership you believe in. It's very simple to win this stock market. But when you start gambling and just trying to catch everything on the way up, you might not. You might not. It might cost you everything. And then that's called tuition, right? So you learned a, lar a hard lesson in life chasing other stocks this year and even last year. And there's these, these suit sayers, there's these guys out here telling you everything on YouTube, trying to get you excited about something. Guys, you guys won't sell the stocks you have. I get that. But I've got a stock you can buy. right? I've got a stock up here on the walls here at GameStop, uh, a stock on my shirt that I wear every day, uh, a stock I talk about religiously. And why? Because I believe. I believe the conviction of this company, by me, myself, and the, and the trade itself, and the investment itself, but the company, I think that they're doing everything right. The, and what's right for the investor. That's what I think is right. So they obey the law. They take care of the 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 investor, they take care of the customer, they take care of the shareholders, and then, and of course, they take care of the vendors themselves. So for those disgruntled employees that are mad at the world, they're saying, you know, I used to work there. Yeah, you used to work there, guys, but you don't work there anymore. And there's new leadership, and this new leadership is giving out shares for pay. 
you know, RSUs to these employees, that might be the incentive to, to stay there. They're giving them holidays off. There's another big incentive for me. It's the culture of family, the culture of, hey, you know what? Your time is valuable to you just like it is to us. So it's not always the bottom line, and it's not always what you guys want to read and believe. Maybe there's some people out here telling you the, the wrong thing. I'll just keep being here and making more videos to tell you the right thing. It's simple. GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop. GameStop. I'm going to see you around, millionaires. Peace. And enjoy the earnings. In about three weeks, and I'm super excited.